Um, yeah. Let me see. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Mm, I don't think I think we're in pretty good shape. We're going to move along. And, mm, mm. Um, and public comments. Do we have a public comment here? Just quickly, thought I would stop in. Uh, legislative session, of course, is coming up. I'm Dan Noyes. I'm the rep for Wolcott we'll Hyde Park, Johnson, and Belvedere. Thought I would stop in and uh, see if you had anything that you wanted to, to talk to me about. And then also let you know that if you want me to come back in December to your December meeting, I can make myself available then. Um, so anytime in between now and then, if you also have priorities that the town's interested in, I would be uh, very interested in listening and, and hearing what you have to say. So you get um, some money for these roads. OK. <laughs> yeah. What's that, Dave? Well, give us some money for these roads. <laughs> Well, I have, I have a for you. Sure. Uh, this new water test that they're having everybody do. For the schools and daycares. Is that the one you're talking no, about? No, the P, I can't remember the name. The one that they... The PFOA? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, we did, but the way I looked at it, that this is something we're going to have to do every year? Good question. I, I don't know. Because that cost us like $495, and the little system that we got up there in North Lake Park is going to yeah. be kind of a... Well, there's no, there's no manufacturing of that product nearby here. I so, understand that, right. but if we're going to have to do this thing every six months or, or a year, it don't, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to really put a burden on us. Fair enough. Yeah. Because no, we only have like 90 people on the system, mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to have to share all that. And what was the cost of you? 495 I think it was, or 75 I don't know. Right. I don't remember the cost. That was... One of the cheapest ones yeah. that I found. Nice one, put it down. So well, I, I yeah. just said, it doesn't really make it clear to me what, you know. Right. And um, just, just like to get more on here or have a, some way of having a meeting or something on on the whole thing yeah. to see where we're if you're headed to. Well, I know that we required all the daycares and schools to check for lead, and then we, we gave them money to not only test, but to repair if they came up with any issues. Well, so I'm surprised we didn't do it for Well, this had this, had this had to do with, uh, the, with the cleaning aspect yeah, here. Yeah, down in Bennington. In Bennington or yeah. something. That, look whatever that test is, I water. can't think the number down yeah. in my head. I should have looked down. I'll, I'll look into that and see what the, uh, I haven't, um, I'm not, you know, familiar with the, the testing requirements? Yeah, I'm not, I mean, we did the test, but I just... You know, there was a big concern because of the issue they had down at Bennington, but you're right, you know, if you don't have that being manufactured near here, and the testing came back negative. I mean, I can't see any need of, um, you know, doing them all mm -hmm. that, that many times, maybe every five years, maybe, or sure. 10 years, or mm -hmm. but every year is kind of... No, it makes it go far, it makes sense. I'll get back to you on that. Okay. I don't have an All right. Probably that's what was I had the letter at home, but I forgot it. Sorry. Yeah, to find out, just you're right if it's once. Uh, yeah, that's right. Like Particularly if there's there's never been anything in the area. Anything yeah. Fair enough. We should have the problem that someone's making something, right? <laughs> um, okay. I don't. You know, the whole three acre thing is. Um, yes. It's definitely on my radar. I yeah. met with Patrick Monks about that. He's at ANR. He's the guy that's administering that. Yeah. The stormwater runoff for commercial properties over right. three acres. There's a long phasing period for that. Um, I'm concerned about some of the impacts it's going to have on like Sterling View that's on the list. Um, and the um, well, High Parks, I mean, uh, Johnson has key wins on the list. PNR Lumber, there's a bunch of them. I've been right. reaching out right. to folks. So. You know, um, the phasing periods, I believe, into is, it's quite a ways out. So it is. It's a great phasing period, but the fees are crazy. Crazy. <laughs> That's all. No the fees are it. crazy. Yeah. How many so people we have in Hyde Park? You are, we, we've got uh, three. Yeah, you've got three in Hyde Park. Three. Yeah. Uh, uh, Danny Heath. Yep. Yeah. Heath. Uh, Sterling, Sterling View. View. Sterling View. And um, school. Oh yeah, yeah high school. school. Uh, Lamoille. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we even if you have a stormwater permit, if it's too old, you've got to get a new one and then come into compliance. You know, and when you look at properties like PNR Lumber, they're using their whole piece of property. It's like, where are they going to put it, and how are they yeah, going to yeah, be able? Well, so to, right. it's something that uh, I think we'll be talking about, and um, 
you know, I, I've been following it pretty closely and went down and met with them uh, at A&R. He was like, huh, you're the first one to come in here. <laughs> it's going to have a big, little bit of an impact on us up yeah. here. So, yeah. you know, explain to me where we're going with this. Well, so. and our, the, the planning, the county planning commission has been, yeah, they made, right, I read right down this and done, right. They made comments yes. that were really yes. good. So, no, no, you know, I'll be following up with that. We've been working with them and keeping an eye on them, so you know, so mm -hmm. they sort of <clears throat> they didn't bring up anything that we weren't already talking about. So, right. that, you know, but um, you can you know, look at some of those fees, and particularly, I think probably any place in the state, but certainly in rural parts of the state where you're not getting big businesses, the fees are just totally. People are going, forget it. I'm not even thinking about doing anything. Mm -hmm. It's just. Yep. It's a total uh, start. What is the uh, thing? Three acres? Anything larger than three acres that is a commercial property that either was grandfathered or had a stormwater permit pre, I think, 2004 or somewhere in there. Early 2000s have to come into compliance now with the current stormwater runoff regulations. So they have to apply for a permit and then come into compliance with that permit. So even if your property was grandfathered, like PNR Lumbers, Tatros down in Cambridge, um, he's in, he lives in um, Johnson, Johnson, so I've been yeah. talking to, yeah, yeah. To, to them as well. Um, they've got to, you've got to come into compliance. And but it's, any, anything after 2005 has gone through this? Yeah. Even if you've already gone through, but, but you have we, to do it again. Well, we've got more, more places in Hike Park and three. How about the National Guards? Well, so they, they probably have a current permit, permit yeah. that's recent. They're brand new. But there are sure. a lot of places that are more Robert than three Robert. acres that aren't on the list, and I'm not talking. I, yeah. I have no idea why. I don't know how they came up with that. Um, there, There's probably existing permits that have been grandfathered and, in or something. Or ones that don't have a permit. <coughs> so it's just yeah. kind of, um, yeah, I'm not sure of the criteria on how they came up. Because um, there are parcels that are bigger, some parcels are chopped up a little bit different. You know, if you had, you know, two 2.5 acre parcels, because that's how it was right. subdivided, right. that doesn't meet the, the threshold. So, anyways, I I didn't ask about why you pick some and not. Hey, others. you missed some, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just what I mean. Thanks right. for pointing that out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like. <laughs> yeah, I figured, well, and, and again, that's obviously through the Planning Commission we're going to, you know, keep yeah. an eye on, and I know that. Yeah, and they're, I think they're on it, and I talked to Seth mm -hmm. over there just to keep, yeah. keep, I'm in the loop with him because it's concerning. Yeah. I mean, I want to see clean water, and I yeah, think we right. need to I'll figure it out, but, you know, I don't know if that's right. the best use of um, yeah. the state going after, um, you know, impervious surfaces in the, at that level, if the, what the impact will will be in the long term on the lake. Yeah, well I, well, I think it will be, and again, you've got a long time to do it. The, the biggie, a lot of these things, when they start, it's just the fees. You know, the fee would suck up all the money that most small business people would have, that they'd be happy to say, okay, here's a here's a 10-year plan for us to do this kind of planting and change this and mm -hmm. do this sort of thing and be able to do it. But if you're paying it all in fees, you got nothing left over most yeah. small business people to be able to do something proactive. Mm -hmm. you know, you just, anyway, I'd, I'd say I think those are, the, those are the biggies right now. And we'll come up with those. We'll, we'll Rose, give you a call. Wells, Three Acre. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And uh, like I said, uh, I'd be glad to come back next month, December meeting, if you want. If you th think of stuff in between there, yeah. always available. We, right. We know you can always give are. me a call or email right. or whatever. Glad to talk about what issues are going on so sure. thank you okay. thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Yeah. okay any other public comments or add to the agendas or feel free to escape whenever you want Dan <laughs> okay let's leap into the land for your budget memorial library budget you want to tell us for the record who you are actually for the camera who you are? I'm the treasurer of the I'm going to grab my stuff and get out of here. My mother is not very good shape. No. So you want to spend money this year? A little bit more than last year. Did you have, did you have a copy, Ron? Did you get them? I 
do not have time to copy. Email only. I, I apologize, you got it at the last minute. We didn't mean it until Friday. We could not. Didn't have a quarter. I did email it on Friday night. But I don't know who's got paper or not. No, I didn't. I didn't do paper. But you can. You can probably tell us where you're spending your money. It'd be a lot easier. There we go. Okay. Really, the perfect cover sheet is the it shows you where the increases are. Okay. 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 So, so I've got $5,572 increase. Is that the bottom line on that? Five thousand five hundred seventy one. Eighty four. Eighty four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always gonna get you up to the hundreds by the time you're done, not the dollars, but, which is a six percent increase. So that's for context what we're starting with. It is but you would probably could explain a lot better more than we can about why it is and the fact that that $3,000, $6,000 that goes to our reserve fund instead of right. to support our budget that right. we want to as a town. Or, so that's that's where the 6% comes from. That's right. correct. <clears throat> that's correct. So it was like two years ago now, it seems like we took, we had an agreement uh, with the trustees that was talked about here. It, no, no, that's right. We to set gradually it up, we agreed this way up, and we did it, it at, and we did it at town meeting. So. <laughs> we, did, we did the so first, well, this, will will vote. this would and be the second, this is the second. Yes, this right. is the next budget right. that starts to creep up on the right. 12. So now instead of 12, it's six. Yeah. six. So it's nine six. last current right. year. Right. It'll be over soon. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the reflection of that 3,000 is in the budget. Now. It's in the, right. But it's exactly. sort of the same money a little bit. So if you're talking, if you're under 3% increase if you take out that three. Right. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's your, your yeah, yeah. So here's the. Remember last year when we made, anyway we did this and we agreed here and town meeting approved it too. So mm -hmm. we got the years, but yeah. and that that's really their big increase. The rest of it isn't much at all. Less in technology. Mm -hmm. A little raise for everybody. Anybody got any questions? I don't. You say didn't hear because, of course, I'm in there all the time, so I know just sort of it, sure. you know. But has the usage? There are always people using the computers. Oh my gosh! Yeah. There are always yeah. people there. It's and it's fascinating. A complete age spectrum too. And just so you know that we just put eight thousand dollars into roof repairs, and most of that is money that wasn't in the budget, but money that we've raised. Yeah. We yeah. Put a substantial amount to the structure. Yeah. I see that you've got the long-term plan to do that. Um, that's what happens with buildings. What was the percentage of the um, increase last year in the budget? FY20 was 1.15, uh, let me see, which is the current year, so that's, I don't, I don't have the whole history, but the issue with the board and the trustees was trying to put money away for that reserve fund. Right. So that's, this is a transition couple of years where you'll see that's right. so 6,000 next right. year. So when you take that out, it's three something percent. Yeah, because three is dedicated to reserve, which is already agreed. No, no, not the money. What percent increase yeah, is? Yeah, well, they're only that percentage increase that is in the is six. So if, if their overall is fifty five hundred, so they're probably about two point seven, something like that. I don't know, I don't know the numbers. Yeah, right, round about that. Right. Something like that. Yeah. Right. Under three percent. Okay, you sitting down and doing math in your head or? 
trying to figure out how. <laughs> no, I just, I, I was thinking it was just a 2% okay. increase last year. That's why I asked, yeah. but you've already answered the question. Yeah. Thank you. So they were wondering that was good. Okay, yes, any more questions for him? Now, do we usually just go ahead and accept it now, and unless it's Yeah, we collect it all, and then we look at it all one big pie eventually. Right, right. So if there's no more questions, and we take that and add it to the pile. At some point, we'll need to sort through it all. Right. Susan, you asked about numbers. And yeah, and numbers. And statistics. Folks I don't using, have right. that with it in use, but I think more and more, it's a, it's a little hub in the, in the, in the town. You know, it gets more and more use for all kinds of things. There's people using it for meetings, yeah. meeting space, and, and uh, activities, and, and uh, children's program is growing incredibly. And, mm -hmm. <clears throat> evening presentations with different groups. The Friends group has done a lot of presentations as well. Yeah. So it's growing. Yeah, it is. Okay, I guess we'll have any more questions. Looks good, it does. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your support. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 you dropped something. Not <laughs> no speed. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff. How are you this evening? Good, good afternoon. Uh, Roger Marcus, Mall County Sheriff, and with me is Sergeant uh, Richard Welk. You brought up the backup? Well, actually. In case it gets too rowdy here. <laughs> he can answer some control related questions. I'll okay. deal with the budget if any come up. He's also a select board chair in uh, Troy. Oh, and okay. He might, he's going to accompany me to a few select board meetings. He's just interested in seeing how we all run your meetings. Well, so. All right, so we're going to shape up here. So he's, he's doing it out on our dime. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Ron, did you get a chance to provide everybody with the latest? No. You got it. Yeah, I don't know if that's in that budget packet. No, it's in my packet. See if they can check your packet. Yeah. No, no, your packet. I think we tried to throw them in the last. I didn't okay. bring uh, an extra, but I'll leave that one up here. Okay. Is it in yours? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some, some high points. It was in by itself. Yeah, the packet went out, and then we answered that on Friday, so I didn't know if they were going to I did. I guess I got better email than you like that. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> do you manage? <laughs> I, may, I may go back to your kind. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give you some highlights, okay. and, and Susan, you have the numbers. There. Yep. But we, we started at this process, and the big, the big issue this year was that last year, at this time, there were two or three people down. And I was fortunate enough to go find people like Sergeant Wells here uh, that were willing to leave. He's a 13-year veteran, I think, 13 years of Newport. He left a 20-year retirement to come with us. We got a couple of, of other, uh, I've got a, a corporal who's a K-9 and, and another senior patrol deputy that were, one's got about 20 years on, the other one's got seven years on. They had. Um, uh, a 20 year retirement and they left the municipality to come with us. Right. So, this so, there's, is I'm de well, I'm de so there's Dan's right behind us. And have you talked with Dan <laughs> about this retirement issue? Um, yes. Okay. He's talking about it. Yeah, okay. I'm actually going to the Woolcott board meeting on Thursday night. Yeah. Because, Dan. Yeah. Dan, you need to go down there and fix this. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's a serious it's a serious issue for all, the, for all the towns because, you know, Roger does all the training. Um, then you all young, young people, yeah, yeah, we're paying for it, and young people today actually talk about retirement and care about retirement, and it's a big deal to them. Which I started thinking about when I was about, never mind, <laughs> you know, and and um, and because we can't get the treasurer to move, um, it it just keeps happening and it's you know when it's not okay and that Roger can convince high quality folks to you know to walk away from a plan we just we have to get this fixed 
there's a study right now, Dan, um, that was uh, part of a bill um, to look at retirement and membership in Group C, which is the 20-year retirement. I don't mean not to look at you here while I'm talking about yeah. it. <laughs> so, and, and uh, uh, they've had two meetings so far. And unfortunately, I thought that the report was due in January. Well, the report of progress is due this January, and it's January 2021 when the, when the, uh, the finished product is due in the legislature. And um, we can't wait that long. Well, we just we just we just lost another another uh, person. Right. Uh, that, that just uh, um, is uh, done effect with fright. So uh, a lot of these folks here that I've been able to come, I was very truthful with. But they are, uh, they have a lot more faith in me than sometimes I have in myself that I'm going to be able to pull this through. Uh, but it's not right. There's seven law enforcement agencies out of about seven that don't have an option for a 20-year retirement. And seven sheriff's departments. And these folks that work for me see every bit of, of, of the nasty stuff that municipalities or, or the state police deal with and they deserve. Uh, that 20 year retirement and it's the last thing I do before I get done. Uh, I will never give up trying to get that. So, um, so and, and you and I have talked several yeah. times and I, and I appreciate all the support that you have given me. So, so having said that, uh, um, for the first time since I've been around, I've, I've got most, mostly people with a lot of experience on. It came at a cost if you look at the uh, health care line. As most everybody in the state knows, healthcare went up 12%. But uh, uh, we we went from you know rookies that were very young with a single plan to family plans, and that put us that's costing us over your fifty thousand dollars. So and that is the the high price item that's gone up there. When we, when I started with the first draft of the budget, it was about a 12% increase, I believe, to each of the communities. But Ron and and the folks on that particular budget group that that meet with us uh, we kept working it through, and we're down to just under 5% now, which just barely covers just the increase in health care. So, um, so that's that's kind of uh, where we're at. Uh, to get that down to, to that figure there, uh, um, which is going to be uh, just a little under 5%, I think it is for each town now. Uh, we had to eliminate quite a lot of our, our overtime line, in which I'm going to uh, back that up with my salary. If, if, if through management I can't get it down to what I have budgeted there, uh, we'll, it'll come out of my salary, or I'll, I'll find the money to, to inject in. Having said that, I had a conversation with Nat Kinney from uh, uh, Johnson, and uh, we have an interest in seeing if we can sit down and come up with about a three-year plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, Susan, if you and I have talked about that in the past or not, but this has taken a lot of time from all of you folks that have attended those meetings, and a lot of time and money from me paying our accountant to, to keep going over these, these numbers. So we would have an interest to, to, to sit down and see if we can come up with a three-year plan that you can live with, that I can live with, um, and then, um, and I understand that each town meeting, your budget has to be ratified and what have you. But that's, that's uh, something I'm talking over a meeting with Nat tomorrow and Ron, I'd like to, uh, Ron and Roger, I'd like to maybe get one more meeting in uh, uh, before September, the lunch meeting, um, or excuse me, before the December budget meetings, and, um, and see if we can work that out. Because I think if we can work this meeting, then it's just a question of, okay, what do you think you can afford for an increase next year or the year after that? And, um, and, you know, I would hope that we're not going to get hit with another $50,000 well, yeah, right. increase like that. So, 
So, anyways, uh, um, I've been numbers right in front of me, but uh, that's kind of what I'm where I'm at. So, so about patrol because that you know for most citizens that's that's what they see or what they complain about is they don't see <laughs> and of course covering a wide area everybody wants you to be there at exactly the same time because you know here here are the here are the busiest here are the busiest times um, so I first of all welcome glad to have you here glad you took a chance on Roger we think it's a good deal um, just give us a little information about patrol and how things are going. And so with, with patrol, other than our normal traffic duties as you know, enforcing the speed, um, obviously when the school starts, we get a lot of phone calls and complaints about speed on separate on roads and that kind of stuff. Um, we started documenting that with directed patrol cars, making sure that uh, we, we pull a card uh, when we go to the area of the, the concern from the citizen. That way, we have the documentation of uh, of our patrol in that area. So, if somebody calls and says, you know, Route 100 is a you know a speed zone, and we need to enforce the speed out there. Um, we'll we'll take during the day. We'll take an hour, two hours out of our time to go do a direct patrol out there on 100, and we'll stay right on 100 and make some stops. Uh, from there, we come back and we type up a little report saying how many vehicles that we've actually pulled over. Uh, what the average speed was, what the highest speed that we got, that kind of stuff. That way if uh, the citizen calls back and says, well, I haven't seen you here, at least we have some documentation there to show that, that we are out there and we take all the complaints as serious as they are. Um, but, you know, you're right. We have this big area to, to patrol, and, uh, you know, so we try, to, we try to narrow it down. If we get, you know, three complaints at the same time in the three different towns, you know, we'll try to separate it from a Monday to Tuesday to try to, Know, get all the towns around that same time as, as much as possible um, but as far as responding to calls we, we, we take the calls you know as soon as they come in we, we have um, we started it several months ago but actually doing the new meetings now we have the numbers for all three towns each each okay, month yep. or I guess we did meet for a couple of months there for a while back so people can see where they're at and how many of those directed patrols, you know, what maybe how many of the, the you know, domestic violence calls we had, the more serious calls and what have you. We break it down pretty well. Ron, we're, we're making that available to you guys, right? We see all that. Uh, what I was wondering as you were talking is, is, is it's one of those things, how much information do you give the people and in what format? Right. And that's, that's a struggle because you're never going to reach everybody. But certainly at town meeting day, there's time for quick summary reports. Well, but yeah, but you guys, you and Roger see those. We give them to you. You take them back to the rest of the board, right? Well, we get the monthly yeah. reports. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, you know that it's always a big, bigger number because that could be from anything from a you know traffic hazard to a to a fight, domestic or anything yeah. like that. Um, you know you get to call the service, then you can break it down to whatever calls that you want to. Like how many calls did you respond for this? Yeah, I'm thinking about the town report that comes out. Yeah, they, they, get, all, they get all those numbers. They just yeah. the highlights. Yeah, yeah. So that I mean, if we're making good use of that, and the select board feels like they're up to date with the monthly reports, it still takes. You know the board basically being able to say we know they're out there what do you want to know specifically yeah. because those off the off the shelf comments don't get us anywhere but if they have if you keep good records and the board has access yeah. to the been, we, for yeah. years we've been putting numbers yeah. in those and what have you uh nat brings out that that you know i got to do a better job marketing the department but you know we spend an hour and a half with the newspapers every week <clears throat> and like I was looking, you know, we've got about 130 incidents in, in, in the paper and the highlights, they, they go through every incident, they pick out the highlights and they put it in the paper. 
We never used to do that, but we have the last couple of years. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that we're doing not enough. I'm, I'm talking about how you use it in the day-to-day -day interactions between the people that have the information. So if a board member in particular gets um, caught up at the bank in Morrisville, they say, what about that sheriff I hear about? I mean, you have access pretty easily, whether it's to Sergeant or myself, to say, wait, yeah, I can get that information, I'll get it for you, because they are keeping track of this. And I don't, I have really haven't heard that much criticism of the Sheriff's Department myself. I, I, don't, think my it's, I don't think it's, it's, I don't perceive that there's a, yeah. a, a white issues out there with this. It's like you say, is if, if everybody in leadership is aware of what it is we can provide for information. A lot of times people complain to you about things and they've never even called us. And I, when it comes to complaints, I think most of you guys know me well enough that I call those folks back and I either take my lick in or, or I defend the department. And, uh, uh, but, you know, a lot of times, uh, I don't, I'm not on social media because I just can't take that much torture. <laughs> but uh, uh, I get worried that, hey, front I'm, porch, I'm with you. <laughs> front porch forum, they said this, they said that, you know, but nobody's ever called me or anybody in the department to complain about said issue. This is why we're going to Wilka Thursday night because this one or two people that went to a select board meeting there in the past said we're never up there. Let me tell you, we've been up to Woolcott and Johnson quite a bit. Uh, we don't send anybody down anymore either. We don't get anybody at the meetings. Oh, yeah, out. yeah. Um, if they come to the meeting, they could see the screen. Yeah, Michael Davidson comes down. He just oh, made, I haven't seen he him. He didn't make the last meeting. Okay, so. I haven't seen him there since. Yeah, I don't know. no, he, he comes down. He's, he's great. Mm -hmm. So, but, so we're going to be up there, you know, and I'm going to bring some of the, the folks up. Uh, what I can't talk without going into executive session is about the drug stuff because they're ongoing investigations and what have you. But, uh, um, you know, what I can tell you is, is that, uh, you know, we, I think I've made some progress where the, uh, the DEA is going to allow a, an embedded, uh, it's actually gonna be uh, a, a more kind of sheriff's employee, not a patrol. But uh, that's going to be embedded with the DEA, but in our office, so that they're not going to drive an hour to come up here to work and an hour back to Burlington. Uh, they're going to be embedded here. How, yeah. how much? Of, how much of your of not just you, Roger, but sheriff time is going into drugs and drug-related stuff now? Just to give me a ballpark or a target. Well, 30 percent, 40 percent. I don't know okay. without really kind of studying that because you've got, uh, it comes into spurts of a lot of overtime okay. because it's, it's all three departments that get together. And, um, and then the other thing is, is that drug stuff that can, can, can arguably be traced back to, to, to drug related issues, um, uh, you know, burglaries or what have you, or, you know, I don't know what you're it's tough to put mm -hmm. an hour, you know, count to it because you, your drug your drug work is constant, even from your regular car stops. I mean, your car stops, you, it's, you know, it's called interdiction where you're looking at signs and uh, looking for, you know, some clues. Um, you're always you're always working an angle because we know it's it, 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 it's everywhere in the state. Yeah. You know, so the only way to fight it is to fight it proactively. And that's what, you know, that's what we're trying to get to. And so it's hard to put an hour on it, uh, how much time we spend on it, because it's almost every case almost has some sort of tie into it. Because like, like the sheriff was saying, you know, any theft, the break-ins, that kind of stuff, they're stealing these items for a reason, to either sell them or try to you know, pawn them off for, for drugs. And it goes right down to our car stops. So it's difficult, but we try to go out at a proactive enforcement, and that's every day, all day. Because it, I, I have not a clue how the average person out there sees or is aware of how much from, and I would assume local law enforcement is the same thing. You know, these drug issues are so all per, pervasive. 
it's when you get when you get to human services now and in talking with local daycares and head starts and, and the family center and asking them of their kids how many of their kids these young and these are you know preschool kids that the folks feel um, have serious behavior emotional issues and, and a lot of them are going a hundred percent of the children they're serving okay of these young kids and I was over at the elementary school last week and um, oh, we're gonna move town meeting back to the elementary school okay, okay. got that sorted out you know so I was over at the elementary school and uh, and and talking about um, oh, yeah the number of kids that um, that need special help that are in their preschool and their kindergartens in their first grade and have significant, they're seeing them as behavior problems because the home situation is so unstable. Um, and you know, and I, I know all of our elementary schools are seeing that. It's, uh, I, I have no clue what we do about it. Our detective is, is uh, Scott Kirkpatrick is, works on, in one manner or another, he's working on juvenile issues. Um, uh, that's what he spends, I want to be spending more time on drug stuff, but he can't get away from the sex assaults and other uh, uh, issues related to kids, and a lot of which have a drug nexus to them. So, you know, it, it's, you know, what it's doing to, to our society and, and you know, is, is um, it's not really, I don't think it's, it's completely understood by the average citizen. No, I think that's right. So, yeah. but, uh, mm. that's cheery. <laughs> <laughs> and when the people in Johnson that grow marijuana plants are getting them stolen by heroin addicts so they can sell them, I mean, we've got a problem. <laughs> They get a problem when they're smoking hemp. <laughs> yeah. All, all you get is a headache. <laughs> but that's wow. crazy. Crazy. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, I got to say, I've got I've to abstain from anything the Sheriff's Department because of my appointment with it. But people don't realize how much stuff is going on every single day inside those doors. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, Roger is running lean, and, and I'd like to see him someday if we could curb the health issues, the insurance and stuff, where we could have some more money to get some more help down there, because these guys are, some days are just running crazy. And, uh, one, one thing about the health thing, Steve, uh, one thing about the health is we are going to ask Blue Cross Blue Shield to come in. Um, and I'll get this wrong with there's HSAs and oh, what yeah, have okay, you. Yeah, okay, right. So to see if we can, you know, perhaps put a, 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 some money in an account and maybe have a higher deductible and do some of what the other businesses are doing. So, and that's, you know, I'm working you know, I'm on that to get somebody in for Blue Cross. And at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is, you know, budget stuff is, even after all these years, I'm still learning as we go along. We try to see what some of the municipalities are doing to, you know, to cut costs and everything, and, and um, you know, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can do with that. I would, that. which is always figuring, but high deductibles always make me a little nervous because then people can be, and I think particularly, and I think in high stress jobs, and and not just for the person that is employed. But for their families and very high stress jobs, um, the need for some counseling can be very real. And to have people avoid that because they've got a high deductible is long term not a good plan. But the idea is that the department pays for you that. You pay for it, right. Yeah. So, so to encourage the people. The whole to do thing it, is, right. Susan, and I know that Eric knows this and all of you guys do this. We don't want to go backwards in, in what we can offer our employees because it's so hard. Tension is so far. We can't do anything about this weather. <laughs> so, you know, and, and the gallus, If you figure out how to do that, you will then make a lot of money. leaving us is going back to warmer weather. <laughs> no blame. But, um, but uh, um, so that's, that's the challenge is affordability for you all, 
for me to provide the same level of service, keeping high quality people here. So, and, and last thing is Ron, um, probably towards the end of the week, I'll make an appointment with you. You wanted to take a look at the salary lines and all of that stuff, so I'll have that. Okay, just let me know. And the, uh, the speed signs, definitely. I watch people step on their brakes all the time. <laughs> Even the sheriff? Or? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. No, they work. They, uh, you know, I, I, I know that, I just think that most conscientious folks are, are see that and, you know, they do slow down a little bit. So. Yeah, we're... Um, we should do something with all three towns. We should write a story about that. Yeah, yeah. That's on the list of them you were going to and haven't gotten around to it yet, right? We, um, oh, just because I'm here and thinking about it, one of the, in our, uh, this big Better Connections grant that we have done in looking in the village at traffic calming, because that's always, you know, the, what, what do we, uh, what do we want to do and what everyone has agreed will definitely help slow people down is by the school. We're, we're planning on making that a four-way stop. Yeah, by Depot Street? It, well, right where it comes up onto May, so that instead of, so from Eden, so you've got to stop this way, but we're going to stop them this way as well. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, in the morning, we know we get, you do the counts, we get so many people zipping through because they want to miss the, they don't want to do the, you know, they want to skip Morrisville. Mm -hmm. So they come zipping right through. It's funny, at the end of the day, it's not, it's in the morning. People, <laughs> people don't seem to be as much of a rush to get home. I don't know. Who, who's, uh, who's in charge of that one? I said, ah. <laughs> well, well, you can show me exactly yeah, what yeah, you're talking That's about. right. But it's one, it just is, it's going to come out and report, but it's one of the things everybody, you know, agreed with that that would, that would be, including the transportation folks, said that will slow people down. Because you're going to stop before turning down. Yeah. And, and coming in the other direction, right, so that it's, uh, you know. And people say, well, why don't you need to change the whole raise? They said, no, we looked at that. There are several people in the village that said, yes, we've looked at that, and the only solution would be a lot of dynamite to blow up that entire section, re-level it, and do everything. Because so they, they looked at it when they were redoing the school, too, because, of course, needing to make sure it was wide enough for the, for the buses to get in and everything. So all of that is a change in ordinances? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've just gotten with the final report, but had a well, let me public meeting, and yeah, yeah, together. we'll let you have a couple of things that were, people had some fascinating ideas about how to slow traffic down in the village. And you'll be glad to know that, it, that, that a couple of times a month, people come out of the sheriff's department, and by the time they get to the post office, they're doing 60. And I went, no, they aren't. <laughs> they're coming out of the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you know, it's just sort of one of those you go, well, I don't think so. But, <clears throat> but and, and again, that's the perception of people with, uh, with you know, I wasn't sure that Roger had a vehicle that could go just to 60 Rogers, in that short. Just, Rogers. just Rogers. Mine's a six cylinder. Got any more questions for no. the sheriff? Thank you for working to get it down there. I mean, you can right. Good job. If there's any other comments that come from, you know, the, the residents here that come to the board at any part and in any meetings, you know, the next day, if you shoot them towards us, you know, that way we can get them answered. So when we have our, we have our meetings, we can have those answers already set for you. I sure. Mean, as soon as the questions come in, we'll get you the answers as, as quick well, as possible. We, we always do. Just, uh, some folks kind of go with problems and can't forget to talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Matt. 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 Hey. Dan. Dan. It's okay, though. I know Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Dan. No worries. Has anybody being a state highway ever did a, uh, a study seeing if they could run a light at the Money Union High School? For, for an hour in the morning or an hour at night. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. That is treacherous coming yeah. out of there. That's why the yellow lights are there when they come on. 
the yeah, yellow is the two minute way. rule. If it takes you longer than two minutes to come out of an intersection on a side road, then it, then it can't. The light, we, we've light, been, but they did research that. State won't do it. State won't do it. Well, we've been this better connection thing. We yeah. did. We did the, that's looked at it, and it's just <laughs> that happened. You know, it's just because in where it is, and it's just it, it did, what, It's interesting. One of the suggestions, which we haven't, and I think we get the whole report, but said that one of the things that you, and again, it's just when they, it's not in the morning coming in, you're okay. It's when it's when people are leaving. It's just sort of the reverse of going through the village, mm -hmm. um, and that would be to hire someone from Roger's office to direct traffic for that hour in there a day. Hmm. But but the, the uh, I think they tried that too. I did. I, I, I want to think at traffic light you have to pay overtime. Though. Well well the the, the state's light there's no way that that's not the site for traffic light. But even I mean if it's on the tack if you keep bringing up tack you know, different different ideas might come up. Don't you want to keep it on that list if that's a concern of the town? I I, 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 yeah, I, I, I mean it's on the current tack list but it's been it gets brought up all the time. Gotcha. Right. You bring right, that transportation, report, yeah. they're going to throw it right out. Yeah, no, no, they've they've already thrown it out a number of times. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. I think one of the things the transportation ought to look at is winter tread tires in Vermont in the winter time. Mm -hmm. That's been discussed down there before. I know it has. And what mm -hmm. making it a making it a law that people ought to have winter treads in Vermont. Because that's costing these towns a lot of money because they get called out in the middle of the night. Somebody's got summer tread tires on. Yeah. And no fines. Right. I know. Okay. Been there. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. See you later. See ya. All right. We got a request from Bast. Did you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Man, I'm not doing this one. Ron? Yeah, the um, Bast Trail received numerous problems in that flood as well as the town's roads and they're sure did <laughs> and they're trying to figure out i think what they're trying to do is figure out which ones don't have detours maybe and then they focus on the ones that they probably had to fix this winter it's obviously more costly and difficult to fix it the right way in the winter but uh, snowmobile trails mm -hmm. open up in a couple weeks and i think they're just trying to get what they can get done done and the rest of it would be on detours. This proposed detour is really the only one. The river's on the other side, and there's a hill, Route 15 on the other. So you kind of pinch down on Black Farm Road in the trail. They actually touch very briefly, but uh, the overall road, road cannot handle <coughs> both at the same time. It either have to be kept open for cars or closed for snowmobiles. It's just it's too narrow to put everything on. They're on just one. not going to be able to do it. Well, so period. It, 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 if you've got a choice, I don't know what my choice is going to be. Is keep yeah. it open for cars. Oh, That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, Mark, Mark oh. looked at it too. Yeah. Mark That's French right. did anyway. He, yeah. he told me that he, we, just, he needs to come in from Route 15 to yeah. get up West yeah. Main Street. We, we right. fixed our roads. I didn't fix our trails. So that's all. I, no, they, I agree. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't, I don't think they're, they're not pushing hard. They were just going, they were trying to do a triage on what they could actually get done this year. But. Right. From here to Marshall, the rail trail is not that bad. Just one spot down here, right? Well, that's what they're talking about. They can't get they can't get through. Well, how long would it take five trucks to haul material down there to fill that in? Uh, they have to work with Vermont Rail Division, and they have to work with VTrans and Vast and a landowner. <laughs> so, I answer the question. Six years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the trail's right. going to be closed for a long time. It would it would take a morning, and it would be done. Or yeah. Worse. yeah. Forever, yeah. Because they took care of the, of the. We got they got the road fixed so that you can get to those. You houses. and I were down there. I could fix yeah. that thing in two days and be done with. I know. Well, the, and the big one got fixed, right? Yeah, the big one. Yeah, they fixed yeah. the road. Yeah, yeah. The Where you were standing, right. they fixed that. Right. I watched that. And it was sort of like, excuse me, you were right there, but that's you know. <clears throat> so no, tell them we're sorry, but we need our road. But I guess we need a motion on that, right? Uh, no. No? We don't? No, okay. They're just looking for input. Like I said, they're just going down their list and trying to see what they can get done. It's like okay. plowing so it's not around a bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send the same people to do that one. Um,
the administration budget discussion. So usually at the beginning of the budget season, which is really tonight, we did put out the notice to get people working on things, but the board hasn't talked about their overall votes. And I don't know what you all are thinking. I mean, obviously the last five years, it seemed like you had a goal of plus or minus 3% or less at the most, yeah. if we can get there. And usually we get a budget that starts in the five, six, 7% when we smush all this stuff together uh, at the end of December. So I, it's a harder project, if you will, at 0% versus saying well, try to keep it under three, you know, which we've been trying, I think our average is 2.7 over the last 10 years or something like that. So it's, it's sort of worked out to meet your goal, but if you're gonna change and go to zero or try to reduce the tax rate without the grand list increasing much next year, um, which only leaves the budget really, because we haven't done much of new construction that's gonna add anything more than offset the depreciation. So we're still looking at under 1% increase in the grand list is early guess. Right. So without a 2 or 3% increase in the grand list, you really, every percent you go over zero is going to increase the tax rate. So if you had, you know, just food for thought, but if when you come in December and you're thinking that you want to keep to the 3% or under, that's useful information. Right. If you're going to go to zero, it's better to say that earlier because it's harder to get to zero. Right. And like I said, the grand list information is usually what I try to give you some insight to, and that's not going to the real positive. That's going to be under 1% again. Yeah. For almost the 10th or 11th year in a row. Somber discussion. How many permits do we have this year, Ron? Oh, it's hard to hard to tell. We've got like 45 permits total, but most of those are miscellaneous that don't affect the grand list. We probably have two or three permits that might boost the grand list. And two or three five. houses? Yeah, that are decent houses. Some of the smaller houses are mobile home houses. <coughs> yeah, they don't add enough to <coughs> move the needle, but 25% is coming back on Lamoille Valley Chevy for this year, so yeah. that will be you know, some money that, that's basically a house or a house and a half. Are they full boat next year? Uh, next year is the last year, yeah. So, we have a small tax stabilization agreement with uh, Sutherland Wells, but that's, not, that, that's minor <coughs> compared to the Chevy deal. Yeah. Not saying that nothing is happening, but what is happening is more like change of use or renovation that doesn't yeah, a lot. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, so. doesn't change things a lot. Right. Uh, the Planning Commission <coughs> in that regard is, is having a hearing in uh, December, December 9th, to create a business park along BFW Drive, uh, off Route 15, to try to do something on the planning and zoning side. Uh, right now that's zone residential with some conditional uses. That's why the dog care place is in there, and that's why the, the contractor yard is there. But there's half of that area is still undeveloped, which could go to housing, which doesn't add anything from the commercial side. If that's what, are you, what are you talking? VFW Drive. Oh, yeah. So that's the only kind of new thing in the zoning or you know, plan of world that might be happening. We'll get some public feedback on the night. December. How's Brasso doing with this? I don't know why his building stalled. He has, he has tanks over there and he's yeah. got some equipment. And then he started to sketch out his building, but I, I don't haven't heard why it stopped. Maybe it was just the timing of that year. Yeah. He had a slow he had a slow build up anyway. It wasn't he was trying to do it with his own right. resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so. it's just a lack of help. Yeah. You know, delivering all the fuel and stuff. Well then he hired he hired John as a service guy. Yeah. So I mean but still, he's busy at this time of year. Yeah. John Servison, I've seen him drive truck. Yeah, I've seen him do that too. But I'm saying he's the service, he's the service truck. Okay. Anybody want to? I mean, I, I think I think realistically, with costs trying to, as we have over the past X number of years, trying to keep it as a modest increase is what we need to do because that's what. 
that's what's happening to everybody else in life. And that's right. Their salaries aren't going up, and everybody else's costs are going up. Right. I agree with you. But, you know, we also got to be realistic about about the costs that are going up and, and, and want to keep good quality service for for residents. Okay, now are we going to get to the cheerful part of this meeting somewhere? <laughs> Talking yeah. about budgets is sort of Cheer always. Number 17. 17, that's right. <laughs> that's for those of you without one, that's adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> the vendor policy. The current policy that we have that requires performers and magicians and other people oh, okay. that come on town property to produce workers comp insurance, which they typically don't have. So our insurance company has recommended that we have those types of folks sign off a bunch of waivers and non-employee agreements and arbitration agreement. It's basically, a, you know, it looks uh, like this to those folks because they're not used to contracts and agreements, but it's really, you know, seven pages. This policy amendment would basically set a minimum level uh, on when they're required, so or maximum level. So if they're not going to make more than six hundred dollars a year, then we'll waive those DLCP requirements. So Abby Sherman was the last example that she wanted to play music up at the Grange for their October okay. event. Okay, yeah. And, you know, she's running around the county trying to get shows at all these little venues and, and dealing with paperwork and all she wants to sing is for an hour or something, and, you know, get 150 bucks. And, you know, they're like, what do we have to do all this? You know, it was just a time consuming for us to sure. explain it, time consuming for right. them to learn something that, you know, not everybody's asking for, because VLCT is one entity that ensures properties that's recommended that we do this. And VLCT has come back with a sort of a, yeah, it's okay. We recommend that you get it, but for under 600, you know, we probably won't even audit that. Because audit of the worker comp uh, annual audit thing do is when they say, who have you paid? And then they try to match it against who provided insurance for you. And if there's a mismatch, they'll penalize the town. So initially we were thinking that we want to have all the paperwork in order so we don't get the penalty from the insurance audit. But they said they'll only pull generally people that have paid a thousand or more kind of stuff for contractors. So they they won't. Her words were, "We probably won't even see anybody under that low of a right. annual." Right. So even if they did audit, they would only be looking for more substantial people. So the risk is that somebody does get hurt, and the insurance company for the town would come in and try to negotiate that and figure out who did what. You know, it would be a little bit messier if somebody actually did get hurt because there's no liability coverage for that if they're not giving it to us. Mm -hmm. So it sort of goes back to the taxpayers as a risk assessment tool. That's why we do all that paperwork. Um, but in some cases, it's probably a really low risk to have somebody come and sing for an hour. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, they're not coming in with the ladders and the equipment and the jackhammer and a nail gun. You know, they're singing for an hour, then moving on to the next show. So the recommendation would be that we, if the board's okay with it, we draft up a new policy to sign in December with that language and probably pass it by the LCT, just make sure they're good with that, even though they're recommending we don't do it, they might have some tweak on the language. That can we can we still have them sign the paper at no cost to them, releasing us from any? Well, we have that already. That's the non-employee agreement and the arbitration, which puts it on a settlement path if there is a dispute. So the, all the paperwork does that, but it's, 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 a con, you know, it's a contract and it's an agreement. And if the LCT, I don't want to go there if it really isn't effective either. You know, you don't want somebody to sign something that doesn't really do anything. No, but I, I can still see the liability to the town, even if it's somebody, somebody singing, if she plugs in and your speaker yeah. and the thing gets electrocuted and well we have we have insurance just it's on the taxpayers insurance not on this performers insurance so the risk assessment that you're doing is really accepting that there's a low risk and if something does happen the town's insurance will take care of it so you know we don't have anybody between the taxpayers and the uh, performer unless they give us those papers or an insurance certificate 
So without those, there is a risk. And I don't know if there's a small folks. Like I don't know if there's an alternate to, to, to go after what you're doing other than what we're already doing. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. one of the all or nothing things. But I can ask VLCT that when I get the draft policy. That I can ask them that specific question. Mm -hmm. Is there something else that might help that doesn't really create this seven, eight page document that yeah. still would help that they know they're operating at their own risk? If it was just a single page, say something yeah. this. Well, okay. yeah, if, it, if it actually means something, yeah. then you yeah. have something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that is yet, but we can look at it. So that'll be our December agenda item. If okay. To actually yeah, look at those policy. Yeah. Okay, highway department. Off to an early start. Yeah, so just two two quick topics. We really haven't had time at all. I don't think Rogers had any time yet to look at twenty one with Mark. So I think that's more of a deferral for December. Right. Right. Uh, potentially a special meeting if it, if this yeah. winter goes crazy. Yeah. I need to do a daytime meeting just on highway yeah. potentially. I don't know where that's headed yet, but that's just some ideas for you and Mark to talk about. But we do need something by the December 16th. You know, I talked to Mark a little about it, told him we need to sit down and yeah, over. Because they had a minute, yeah. Depending on storms or whatever. Right. I know he's off this week deer hunting, but he'll be in working tonight. So anyway, that's the kind of a goal is the yeah. 16th of December to have something back to the board. And, and if you want to call a special meeting during December, rather than try to squeeze it onto a two hour select meeting. Because yeah. that can take an hour by itself. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, we probably want to. I think I'd be up. Yeah, schedule a, yeah. just to talk. I know about Mark's getting roads. pretty discouraged, Bill. Plowing the roads and they push it back in the roads and pushes it back and they push it back and stores. Yeah, that's, a, that's another topic. So on the winter sidewalk maintenance, last year Mark had some issues and this year they changed the village maintenance practice so they're dumping sand on the sidewalks which creates more of a problem because it will build up and be icy and muddy and it will actually wash into our stormwater. Yeah. Yeah, plum, plum. Uh, Mark, I think they're, I said, Mark, where are they getting their sand from? He said, from the town sand piles. So <laughs> there's, there's a kind of a can control that. <laughs> they, they can't do that legally either. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on with that. Because of the stormwater. They don't do it in Morrisville, I know of. Yeah, they sand in Morrisville streets. Hi. You can sand your salt. I, I you can salt? No, it's sand. There's, no, there's no, it's not final yet. It's it's just, just, it creates more maintenance because uh, it does wash into the right. basin. But all Mark's asking for them to help pay when we get hired in here to pump out those, those, those storm drains because the sand is going to plug them. Well, we'll drop pay for it then. Well, that's something we've got to discuss. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple issues yeah, we have a, things that are done. So. Yeah. We got a long list of things we need to discuss about the village. What What was the reason? I don't remember last year they quit salt. I can't remember. Dog paws. Dog paws. Dog paws. They make socks for them now. And I recommended that we give them socks for the dogs, and you guys all gave me a hard time. As long as they sign a waiver. Right. <laughs> That wasn't the dumbest thing I ever heard, but pretty close pretty to close it. To it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see if I can do better. Okay. <laughs> I'll just put, oh. we'll push those to an early December meeting when Mark's free, maybe yeah, after yeah. Thanksgiving, but to talk about all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, We're going to have more case examples by then, too. Do, yeah, people, the, that's the, right. do, so do people realize there's still salt in the sand? Yeah, but it's not, it's not 100 percent salt. There's still salt in the sand. The dog is still gonna. I don't care how you look at it. There's still salt yeah, in the pile. sand. Yep. And hell, you're gonna stop it from freezing if you don't put salt with it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So there may there may maybe be a couple of. Daytime meetings coming up here to get in yeah. depth into a variety of issues. I, I see so. them coming up. So you better get your deer. Okay. Deer season will be over in early December. What weather? Mid December. Oh, right. Again. Yeah. Muzzle. Right. Yeah, muzzle. Yeah. right. Never ends. Now we've got pea sugar. <laughs> you can go out and trip them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Highway Project 2020. 
part of the road grants, yeah, right. part of the fallout from the uh, flood was it overlapped the grant round right. for better right. better roads, which is what it was due at the end of November, right. but they, they pushed it to December 13th, I think. So one of the we have six roads that kind of highlighted uh, needs, and that you know it's it's there's deficiencies, and then there's better designs, and then there's putting things back together and holding your, you know, crossing your fingers. And of the six sites we <coughs> identified from the flood, they all have different kind of solutions. And some of it needs more study. So Watershed Consulting, who's helped us before, has visited all six sites and they're trying to do this analysis and trying to look at what the current policies that the board has adopted require. And then what does the town do in addition to those if those seem to be in a unique situation? So for example, we have of the, the six sites, we have the Wickham Island Bridge, which is a deficient bridge, which only will be repaired under the state bridge program. That's a 15, 10 year, 20 year, who knows what. But we can push that along a little bit by getting it identified. So I think it's probably time to do that. We've been at that bridge every time it gets a little high, we have a problem. So there's something wrong that's not functioning right beyond the fact that it's one lane. Then we have Jones Road, which has multiple streams hitting a relatively flat road. And one of those fails, it just follows the road. And that, that was a lot of a sizing issue and a water direction issue. We're not really so sure flat. what that best solution would be. But the water looks like it goes uphill for a little ways on one door instead of going straight across. And that's kind of thing. You can sort of see what the problem was. Yeah, so that might be a more minor fix, and then you get up onto uh, uh, North High Park Road at Thompsonville Road, and that does have a large six-foot culvert, but just below it is a 12 by 7 box culvert. You know, so you get something that's almost twice as large just downhill from a small culvert, and that one may need some design work. And it also takes a lot of water from beaver dam areas and woods, which tend to have a lot of debris from time to time. And that six foot culvert, at least memory from the highway crew notes, is that that one plugs often because of the beaver dam activity up, up on the state park land and up towards Eden. So even though you may have a 50 year design and says, oh, you don't need a six, you need a nine. You may need a 16 <laughs> to, to let that through or at least match the lower one below it. Eventually, it settles out to the wetlands in North Pine Park down by Heath Lumber Mill and stuff. But before it gets down there, it's got to drop across two or three roads, town roads, which all had problems in that last event. Then you can go to McKinn Street Hill Road, which is what we're going to talk about in a second, which has the same kind of thing. It's, you know, slope side streams hitting a road that is also on a neg you know, negative grade, so the water, if it does pop up or fill it. Um, culvert or overflow of culvert or overflow of the ditch line, it finds a road or will, will run pretty soon. You know, 1,200 feet of road is gone at the bottom towards Diggins Road. Uh, we had uh, Diggins Road itself, which washed out in two spots, and Brook Road down. Uh, I think that was one culvert that could be separated in, in the middle. We don't know, but there's some weird stuff going there that. The water's coming out below the culvert on the outlet side. So it kind of goes in the right way, but then it separates and goes under the culvert and comes out below the culvert on the out outlet side. Plastic. It's tool crack. Yeah, it could be cracked or separated by the seams. Yeah. Well, two nine foot culverts side by side. Is that the same velocity as one eight? No. No. They don't like that. That one's a question. No, that's a trap. <laughs> That's, That's right. Think about the debris you were talking about. Yeah. But but it won't two nines won't move as much water as one eighteen. Correct. Correct. That's right. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Usually if you get yeah. around I don't know, I say around two seven or seven or eight feet in width, which is like ninety six inches and once you get above that you're talking more like box culverts yeah. or a D shaped culvert. Yeah. So you're you're leaving your culverts behind. <coughs> you need the bank width size generally. Well the beauty of the box culvert if, you, if they go to that, a square culvert is you also can incorporate the wings into that yeah. in the pan easier than you can 
like the one at the end of Brook Road in Centerville Road. Yeah. I mean, that's an oddball. To put that culvert back in, I don't know if they would ever do, yeah. you know, keep doing that, but the box culvert's the way to go. You know, I was talking to somebody that's really in the know, and, and part of these washouts is self-inflicted. And I'm not saying Hyde Park, I'm saying everybody. Because we don't get any more rain now than we did 10, 15 years ago. But we don't get all day rains, we get 15 minute flashes. So we've got to start looking the way we crown the roads and so water runs off and sort of runs the length of them. Well, first thing you got to do is clean the ditches else so the water's got a place to go now. Out. First thing you got to do is move that four inch berm on the outside of the, on the lip to which, which keeps it in the road. Yep. Yeah, once you get over, once you start, well, Thompson Hill actually is going up the hill, even on the asphalt, it's running down the road. Mm -hmm. But once you get over about six or seven percent, then those wheel ruts or saddles really right. start to become a problem. Right. And then once you hit something that's 10, 12 percent, that's Diggins Road. Right? Yeah, Diggins Road is really a problem. Yeah. Um, the only way, when I worked in California, the only way we beat that once we hit steep roads is we stop crowning them. And we actually sloped them right into the ditch. Yes. The whole road lane right into it. And we stopped the concept of yeah, and, and we got a lot of roads that we go a long way without any water cut off, water cuts. Yeah. And, and that's got to be looked at too. Cause, uh, Again, water bars? You, no, you no water cut off, so water get off of them. Oh, water oh, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> but the problem <laughs> that you're saying is a lot of people don't want that water in their fields. <laughs> True. That's problem you run into. Well, a lot of people don't want this half a million dollar project we got coming up either. So and that's the, of the list, there's McKinstry Hill Road, which is not a new issue. We've had issues with washouts and ponds being full of debris, I think. And that is a study type thing because there's probably a better way to deal with that water. Some of it is most likely going to require stormwater easements because just like Roland was saying, you know, people really don't want stormwater. If they agree to it, then we have to get an easement to preserve our right because the next landowner may change their mind or something. So whatever we do on McKinstry Hill or even Jones Road, some of those are going to require us to get out of the right of way a little bit and we really can't do that without a, without a plan, show it to the landowner deal with the whole road section. You know, Jones Road is probably 2,000 feet long maybe, and McKinstry Hill is almost the same. Uh, and get a permanent plan down there, whether it's flattening the crown or digging a bigger ditch or putting a bigger culvert in, but it, it's, they're repetitive at this point. Mm -hmm. They're not every year, but you know, when we get those splashes of four or five inches in two, three hours, mm -hmm. they're gonna, they would fail again. Even with all the work that we just did, they would fail again too much water from this. Well, the other thing too is on some sections is you might need more culverts. Yeah. More easements though. That's the right, but they go together. Right. right, you have to go with that, but you might need more culverts to stop that because if you have one fail, then you're not gaining this massive amount of water before it gets to the next one. So he's intercepted it with another culvert. The ditch on, Mc, on McKinstry already dealing with ledge. Right. Where that, where that ditch is and I mean, they, they made the ditch a little bit bigger, and now you're starting to impinge on, on the road width, so cars are kind of slowing down. Which actually down. isn't a bad thing in certain sections. <laughs> I, I was so right. right. Yeah. Way, so, you know, it's a double-edged sword there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to McKinstry Hill? Because I'm sure you can give more gory details than I can. Well, one, one, of, the, one of the culverts uh, floods the leach field of one of the one of the houses there. It just well, dumps, dumps out and, and spreads out <laughs> and the leach fields always always flooded because that's where it dumps out. So leach fields are accepted. That goes back to how they get a permit for the leach field. The house has been there since nineteen seventy. Don't yeah. know the answer to that. So can't answer that question for you. Um, but that aside, a comprehensive plan is definitely needed. Yeah. Some assessment because you're working with multiple different things happening. And the easements are there, you know. I think landowners are looking to work with the town, not against the town. Yeah. They want to see that. 
no, and we don't want to see our properties in pinch. So we get a good plan together that works with everybody. We've got um, thirteen hundred feet of road frontage there, and and uh, and our neighbor's got. She probably has close to a mile of road frontage at this point. So I'm sure I'm sure she's willing to work with the town as well. The water going into the leach field. The beginning of that would take. Once you move, redirect that water, then stormwater people get involved. I mean, right now it, it, it says it is as it is, but as soon as you, let's say we try to redirect that water, we can't redirect that without stormwater. Anything that runs water more than 10 days. I don't think it needs to be redirected. And the, the culprit some other changes up. further up the chain and will and affect everything It just needs to be moved beyond. Yes. And, and I think there's the remnants of an old, an old, call it a swale, um, that- Berm. Yeah, so that it, the water used to perhaps flow beyond it uh, and, and could continue, but it probably needs, a, not a box culvert, but um, a catch basin or something, and then a culvert because uh, I've got a well that's, that's right there on the other side, so it would have to go underneath the, the well pipe and that, and then it would get it beyond, and then it could go run down the swale and then keep going down the property. So it wouldn't be that big, big a deal, but it would need it would need a catch basin, you know, in the town's right of way, and then a culvert to just go beyond it. The only thing that, with that it might be a solution. Be careful with the catch basins out in the country. Because the first thing it does is leaves and sticks will plug them up. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm using the word catch basin. Yeah. I mean basically an, an open rock lined pit. There you with, go. With a, yeah. with a culvert. Did you send it down to the sugar wood, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's further down there. Yeah. I, I have, um, I, there's a big culvert down there and it goes and ends it up in uh, Seneca Brook. Yeah. And also oh, no. where all that water does go. So yep. we just need to direct it that way. Yeah. It needs some engineering. Um, Peter Danforth um, came up there and looked at it um, last spring um, when I went to the Green Stormwater Initiatives. Um, they have two presentations. I, I went out to those and I talked to him about McKinstry Hill and he came up and, and looked at it pictures of that. So, Ron, with this, it just sort of it moved McKinstry Hill towards getting a better plan for the whole Well, yeah, there'd be two, two parts. The, the mm -hmm. better roads program is really for the construction phase of it. So right. overlapping the grant and whatever, whatever the award date is, we'll be working with Watershed to come up with a an agreed upon work uh, list, but in concept, we would say ditching and culverts and drainage and just work on that 1200 or whatever, 1500 foot length. But when the project is done, we'll have you know something that everybody can agree to. Yeah. Hopefully, by the time that the awards come down, they're they're not that far off from their preliminary assessment. You know, as far as watershed is, they've looked at sizing and culvert already. They've looked at the site, they've measured it, so it's not that far from some conceptual plans that we might be able to use in the grant application, and then fine tune it before construction. Not just your section, because don't, once you get to Judy Rex's, don't the water head the other way? Mm -hmm. Judy Rex, huh? Oh, Finn's mother. Yeah, don't, don't, don't that hand, don't that send it yeah. the other way? Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yes. going in the opposite direction. Yeah. So pretty much from the McKinley's down. Yeah. And we're, it's, we're just it's mentioning the stream that comes down the hill yeah. is, is what starts kind of what hits our house and beyond. Okay. And then and yeah. also what comes down from McKinley's. So the other projects, the, the other sites are, are still being reviewed. We just, they, they might need a bigger grant program or they might need just town to spend some time on it. This summer is one of their two or three, you know, projects that they try to do each summer. You know, town forces only without right. grants. You know, we have to figure that out in the next several months. Yeah. 
Right. Okay. Well, spring will be here, you know. <laughs> and then it's over. So <laughs> if you're not sort of ready in the winter to go, you'll miss all of the next construction well, yeah, season. That's, yeah, that's true. So. This is so you have this as an action item. We need to what? Yeah, so the grant's due before your next meeting at this point. So it'd be approval to apply right. for the uh, maximum grant under the Better Roads for McKinsey Hill. Uh, not not as part of the vote, the, the vote, but just as part of your knowledge that Watershed Consulting will be working with our landowners and highway crew to come up right. with a plan with that's plan. not right. funded by the grant. That's got to this is just for the construction. Yeah, this is just Whatever construction. improvements are agreed upon at the maximum level, they have three or four different programs. I think this is fifty thousand. It's, it's for culverts and drainage. It's sixty thousand for structures now. So if you had one structure in town, like a four or five, six foot culvert, they'll do up to sixty thousand. They changed the whole program for Rollins. That can be funny. But they changed the funding levels and came up with different because ten thousand grants weren't getting real projects done. So they broke it up into four different programs. So this is a drainage covert cross ditch type grant program. Not a structure. I don't, there's not one structure on McKinstry. It's multiple it's issues series, with yeah. roadside drainage on McKinstry. Brook Road is one structure. You know, so that's that's another program. Uh, better room. Okay, so need a motion to apply. It motion to apply for the better grant. Better rules grant for the transcript. Okay. Any more questions? Information? Okay. All right. Everybody in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. I think there will be a lot of applications for grants this year. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, the stormwater, we already talked about it a little bit. The uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Pretty solved that. There's a draft letter which that yeah. is, did that get in your packet? Yeah, in this year. So the draft letter is from my other conversations, not with regional planning, but with either Mark French or Peter Danforth that was mentioned. So I, we had a supplemental list of concerns that didn't exactly match what the regional planning commission was raising, but we would send it in by Page the 11. The comment period ends this weekend, so we need to get that in uh, by next Monday. So the town letter would either be a, a vote of the board to have Susan sign it and get it on record with A&R, or I could sign it, but it's better from the select board. Those are those are concerns that come from staff. You know, they're not they're things that we've talked about before that. Love it. Page eleven. Page eleven. There's the um, um, the letter from the planning commission, which is um, is really as I say, Ron. Just we sort of picked up on the things that that were particular to us, but they've um, there are a lot of good comments and from the planning commission addressed to them that that I think represent. What's this going to cost the town this last storm? It's a moving target. We have uh, initial was 151,000 in the initial first day, second day. Yes, I, th I think I would take that would, would you, would you go, going around with the FEMA people. They said yeah. you're way off. <laughs> no, that, that, that would take care of the North Heights back road. <laughs> yeah, so we have one paving estimate for just North Heights Park Road at like 60, 30, 36,000. 30, 300 and something dollars a ton 
we usually for paving, we usually pay 65. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I ain't, ain't price gouging, is there now? Do you do you do that or, or do you wait? And Mark's like, I can't plow dirt on a hill like that, you know. No, he's like, no, 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 but yeah. he has other hills that are gravel. So. Yeah, but he's put salt on it. See what he's doing? He's putting salt on that. Right. Then yeah. he has to send the steam truck after that. Yeah, but if he, if he don't shut it off, that's going to be just a mud hole, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh boy, would. Well, it's going to be terrible for most. Well, maybe most it of might them. rust that barn away that's falling in the road. <laughs> The water didn't take that. Things will be <laughs> nor, nor did it take the stumps, but it replaced the culvert. Yeah. yeah. So we don't we don't know yet. The costs are going to go up, but we don't have any real good numbers either yet. And plus, we have a lot of hidden stuff that's going to pop up in April and May that is related, but it's going to be on our nickel at that point. Yeah. Because so yeah, we haven't it hasn't thawed out and had another storm yet, and something that we haven't quite well, we had, yeah, we prepared had a, properly. There was an undermined culvert up near Melvin Harvey's yeah. that dropped the pavement five, six inches from that one event. And yeah. there's other culverts that are probably just suspended. You know, they're not, they didn't drop yet. Yeah. Yeah. Spring, will, <laughs> spring will be the final judge. So, yeah. so anyway, that's just, it's an unknown day, but I don't, I don't want to guess because it's, it's, I've got new information today. It's all, it's going to go up, you know, so yeah. where it stops us. Okay, but back to the, let's see the um, the letter to the to the agency of natural resources. This would be the motion that, for us to send it for me to sign it. Yes, I'll make a motion. Soon signs out a letter. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Doesn't matter if I'm opposed or not, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Here's a good, here, this is a part that makes us happy. The uh, payment for the fire truck, which um, you probably all don't remember, but when we applied and getting the money, they were only gonna give, we're only gonna get like half of it or something, right? Which we'd all, they'd always been eligible before. 55,000, yeah. Yeah, and um, as I went into panic mode and said, wait, we need to, and Ron said, no, no, let's just, let's just give, because they didn't have, really have a good reason. And when he said, we've always gotten it before, what's wrong, what have you changed, what are you doing? They didn't have a good answer. So Ron just politely and nicely stayed on them and presto. There's the 110. For how many years? Five. Five. 22 a year, zero. This is, they're going to order a new fire? No, no, this is, no, this is the, the one they got. got. Yeah, no, the, no, yeah, no this is the new oh, one. Oh. Right. No, this is the new one. And the money we were going to have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'll be, another, that'll be another month or so before they want to go. Uh, yeah. Relax, Roger. So um, I guess what we just have to do is agree to it, right, Ron? Yeah, authorization for you to sign the promissory note, which is right here. Right, right. 20, 22 a year for yeah. five years. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we'll, we can do that during the day if you get authorization. Yeah. Yeah. So make, make, um, I'll just have somebody else make the motion. Do what? Maybe I'll, somebody I'll, you have to use the fire department. Right. I'll make a motion to so sign the, uh, the loan agreement for $110,000. Second. Five years. Yeah, Twenty-two thousand a year. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? I thought maybe Rogers just going to write out a check and do the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oops. Eleven. The Town Energy Committee. We have a letter of interest from Christine Hawkquist to join that group of super. three right now. Yeah, so super. they're going to work out some kind of Skyping Not relationship. Yeah. So yeah. I think she's mostly in Canada now or up. Well, that, that literally goes. right on the border. So I think you know. she's got one of those great offices up, up in Literally half is in Canada and half is in the U.S. She's still working on that battery thing. With that. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we, need a motion. we need a motion to appoint her? Yeah. Yep, okay. We do. Yeah. 
He doesn't have it. We try. Okay. Somebody want to move to a pointer? Make, make a motion to appoint um, Christine Hellicrest to the town energy committee. Okay. And second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now we have some place here we have a document. Now, Ron, this is our everything that we did last meeting. This is now the formal thing, right? Yes. The, the, uh, it's, it's, quite, yeah. it's a little complicated. Usually you're dealing with one road. Yeah. <laughs> this this right. includes nine. This, the easiest place to look is actually on page. So what this is, this is what we proposed, and this is what... Yeah, you have to walk through the whole process because right. the order right. has to say how you came to that conclusion right. and all that. So the, the very much of the, the summary of the conclusion on page 7, right in the middle of the middle where it says, yep. it is ordered and public good necessity convenience uh, require that. And then number one, Munson Road be discontinued. Unnamed Town Highway 73 be discontinued. These are class, both of the class four roads. Orchard Terrace is a unclassified highway, which the town never had legal right to go on, but we're plowing. So we're discontinuing the unclassified section so they could legally stop plowing it and not have the landowners ask you to keep doing it. Foreman Road, the last 800 feet was never maintained, but for some reason it was class three. That's gonna be discontinued. Webster Road, class four is unbuilt under pond water, through the woods and mud, on private property looking stuff that nobody really should be on. Uh, but it looks on the maps as if it's a through road to between Vermont 100 and, and Grimes Road. So this public trail status will take it off most of the mapping that uh, trailer trucks are having a hard time uh, getting stuck up in there. And nobody's objecting to it. Yeah, um, Google Maps. But it does preserve the public right away for future right. select boards to debate what to do about that. Uh, Richardson Road, no action on that. We proposed for discontinuance, so it's going to remain in class three. Sterling View Road, the loop at the end. Uh, highway guys would use it in an emergency because some of the turnaround area, there's no official turnaround area in Sterling View. Not sure why that happened, but it's a eight tenths of a mile from Route 15 with no turnaround. So the turnaround will be this paved loop at loop, the end of yeah. the road, which adds another two tenths of a mile uh, as Class Three. Depot Street Extension, same thing. It was a Class Three road out to the end where the town never went. So this shortens it up to uh, Class Three, which is your on maintenance from. Depot Street to the trailhead parking site. And that'll be class four past there, which is unmaintained. Which is what it does now. There's no maintenance out there. And the last one is the acceptance of crab apple, which was promised twenty five years ago, but nobody ever finished the official process to add it to the town highway system. So we've been maintaining it without any state aid. So that's the summary. The details are all in this. There's a finding section which go over some of the things that were set the hearing. There's a notice in there from the first Don't hearing the notice. The and a summary of all the interested parties. Yep. This actually gives you exactly what you're talking about. That's all the information. Yep. 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 That's the so the that's three, right. 30 day appeal period starts mm -hmm. when you sign that. Yeah. Good job on this, Ron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's useful for the next round if you. Or somebody decides to do it because it sort of charts out some of the reasons why you keep something or well, you should get something off your list. Yeah, right. you know, the pros and cons for each road that. You know, 20 years from now, when the select board goes through this again, they'll have some history this time. Right? I have no idea what they're going to do it next. It won't be me, probably. That's what we said 20 years. <laughs> It really is a housekeeping kind of clean up thing where you want to, if you have something that's not quite right, you really should have a good inventory of your roads and there's yes. 
probably a handful more that really should yes. be done. But yes, there are. <laughs> we'll figure out when the energy level comes back around. So I guess we technically need a motion to. Yep, I have a select board here. order for the nine roads. I make a motion that we accept the nine was nine roads, not nine roads uh, as discontinuances or change of flash or or uh, leave that section. Second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Do you have any errors and omissions? Nothing. No. Nothing? Okay. Okay, review the minutes. People are good. Make the motion set the minutes for the meeting of 10-21-19 and 11 4 19. Second. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. <laughs> aye. aye. Anybody opposed? I, I've got a stain. Uh, from one, two, three, four, five, and six, because I was not here, and abstaining from the November fourth, because I wasn't here. Okay. But I will agree with seven, eight, nine, ten. You're good, man. Yeah. What more do we ask for? That's all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ten orders. Until 6.38, because I, I arrived at 6.38. For the part that you participated. Right. Yes. Okay. Switch. Send all these in through there. I guess I know that. Huh? 
Feels like a big task for him. Huh? <laughs> the, this know, this is the review pile. So that rubber was really up. good. Contracted anybody for fuel oil for the? Is everybody taking care of their own? No, I think they call around. I don't know if they hired us. Don't a fire. Well, the library in this case, but fire library. What are the buildings we buy fuel? For? No, there hasn't been one contract at all for all of them. Number one. That's correct. The prices do vary. Because reading it is really, I'm sorry, I'm no, not going to take the beep out of the beep. Or is the, your meeting with Brad Terrier said had a motion in the minutes to not spend any more money on fast squad right. without coming to the board. Correct. So he didn't go to the board and he spent money. So, right. So this one is, do you want to approve this expenditure after the fact? No. 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 That's why, that's why Allison wrote, I can't pay this. <laughs> Allison wrote, I can't pay, correct? <laughs> and that was, She's good. <laughs> she is. So I would do this and we'll go, correct. Come and talk to us. I'm just going to slip that out there for you. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why that got held up. Right. Mm. Okay. We got, we got some more coming this direction too here in a minute. Uh, paper around here um, with FEMA are the fire departments eligible? We're going to submit everything. Okay. They haven't scheduled a meeting with their next team yet mm -hmm. so we're still collecting information and invoices and summaries of damage and who did what where and then when they do come we should have a pretty to put the report together by, <coughs> by the site number. What we haven't figured out yet is what FEMA is going to find or recommend to combine. So there's a couple. Jones Road is an example. We have That's right. probably two sites, but yeah. No, I'm on. I'm on a. I'm on the fire departments. Yeah. Okay. And where they? They submitted their invoices. Yes, they did submit their invoices. <laughs> well, and I, it was just sort of like from, and Allison will work with North High Park. Yeah. Because we got, you know, there's all of them. This one is closer to it, but I just was curious if you know, have, have, have there been previous invoices that we submitted? What are they, um, I just, I figured we'd get all the information submitted, but I'm not quite sure what they did. Uh, I think the initial response was traffic control. But I don't know what they did on an ongoing basis. I don't have that information. Setting up the barricades and things like that. I didn't really see a lot of firefighters around. You know, when I was driving around. So right. And it must have been the overnight hours time. when the roads were walking. This highway was. Oh, huh? Highway was doing only oh, over so much. Um, 
Well, what did the Du Bois and King do for building maintenance? Building maintenance? I thought that's what I read. No. Building maintenance and repair. What department are you? Oh. I mean, did, did you look in the most <coughs> past yeah, the right right right. And I was like, so if they, were they out in the North Pike Park? Park? Was any of that? Well, there's a lot of thing. My theory of this thing is this and this and this shouldn't have been out there. Could have used this truck and we had a town truck, uh, this one here. town truck and a pickup right. truck to check them roads. That's the right. And actually, it's up to the highway department to check the roads because right. the fire department right. don't know. It was just it was the first thing about right. 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 Well, so, I don't, I don't know that these. I don't know if they were out or not. Yeah. I, I think yeah. they were. I think they all took different roads because I heard some people up McKenzie Hill on the right. rail, and I heard some down Wickham Island, a uh, Wickham Island Road. We go out in one of those big trucks on a. Three hundred dollars an hour. Well, it's not only that, you got a $500 you know, four, got five, a gigantic. $100,000 truck. Nope, it's going to be so Could have sunk anywhere. Or a $50 sign. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, I just don't feel they're qualified to check the road. Like, well, I mean, it should have been a highway environment. Well, they could have been called once there was a problem. They could have been called. Well, I think they got called out first. The intersection, so. Maybe. Yeah. Well, the intersection, I could see maybe, yeah. But I mean, like going up Thompson Hill, that didn't give out right off till after. I don't know. Somebody come down through there and weren't bad. The next, you know, the black top dropped down. You know, Cooper Hill Road. Well, look, the road looked okay, but there was nothing under it. Yeah, yeah you don't know that those starts are heavy. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to happen the town truck, we can replace the town truck. A lot cheaper you can place the fire truck. You just like fire trucks too much. No, it's just a lot of money. <laughs> well, it, it, that's what I'm right. Yeah. Let's <clears throat> uh, see, so there's another one for you. Um, No, maybe I no. didn't. No, okay. maybe I didn't. That's all kinds of sticky notes. Yeah, I know. But just... <laughs> you must go through a pad of those. <clears throat> We're going to have computers when we be getting all this paperwork. <laughs> saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And we have the uh, we have the one that we aren't paying. And um, take it out of the budget. We'll uh, I'll, I'll talk with Allison tomorrow. Okay. She's got a Gotten good at sending cryptic messages to people from me. <laughs> she does a good job. She is. She's. She's. 
Just send you an email, right? Daytime, I think so. What's December first? What? Second is a Monday. Yeah, yeah. Monday. First part be okay. Yeah, I think so. What's Roger Berry's schedule for day? What day? Any day. Better than morning. Better than afternoon. Eight. Morning is a hell of a lot better for me. Okay, like a. Six. No, not if you value your life. <laughs> <laughs> no one would tell you it's like, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> that's a bad plan. So December first. Well, no, that's a uh, that's Sunday. Oh, that's all right. December second is a Monday. I work. Um, What time, like, we figure we need a couple hours? Okay. Two hours. Two hours. I'll be able to make it in the morning. Oh, you can't? You're retired. Not, You're supposed to have retirement's time. Retirement's not treating me good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I did not I thought you called your own shot. Out here. Right. Okay, so if, if mornings don't. What when, morning would work when for you? Works for you? <laughs> None of them? Okay. Unless you do it at three <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> so when so. when when works for you, really? In the afternoon, a lot. Of but afternoon, like three in the after, four in the afternoon. Four. It's gonna take two hours just to at three. Okay, let's see. If we do that, then I can't. I can't do Mon I can't do Monday the second, but I could do Tuesday or Wednesday third. or Thursday. So the third, fourth, or fifth. I can't do it the fifth. Okay. And Tuesday the third. Third. That was Tuesday. Three o'clock. At three o'clock. Let's say we're we're doing roads then. Mm -hmm. We'll see how far we get from there and if we need anything else. How's that? December third roll. Yep, yeah, thirty yeah. three. Okay. Planning Commission public hearing on zoning changes. This one? No, Rogers. Oh, he's got another one too? You're on okay, for Tuesday the third? No, the planning thing. Oh, that's canceled yeah. tonight. Oh, no, no the, you're talking about the economic development. Okay, I don't need to be there. You need to be there Wednesday, this Wednesday. Okay. At 4 30. Okay, well, uh, what date's that? 20. 20th. November 20th. At 4 30. Select board's going to meet on the 3rd of December at 3 o'clock. Yeah, I've got that. And then the planning commission hearing is December 9th at 6 o'clock. It's a Monday. And then your meeting is December 16th at 6 o'clock. For the next month again. That's it. So far. If you want. Roger wants to meet with you at a special meeting for some reason. He's trying to. Oh, the, on the budget? Yeah, I don't know when that's going to happen. He's going to call. And then I've got the courthouse meeting. Roger. Yeah, the courthouse meeting is coming up. Roger, if you want, you can have Christmas Eve off. <laughs> <laughs> you just signed yourself up to the county courthouse. When's that meeting? No, I don't know. When is that? Meeting? Um, <laughs> meetings, it's a lot of meetings. Yeah. So the county's meeting December 5th on their budget, which is a $500 increase right now from last year. So that's a 
pretty much flat foot. Yeah. I like to point when I think Yeah, that's good. Hey, Ron, did, did you ever get a chance to, uh, no, who was it? Yeah, Roger, did you ever get a chance to talk to? <laughs> no. Uh, no. On that garage? No. Are you planning to? Oh, the one in the road? Well, I would try to help I was going to bring that up. In a, in a two, three time people, time. Phil, said it's going to go, it's going to go this way. Out of the road. The way it was leading. I don't know how it is leading now. now. Uh, 25 feet away from the center line, is it going to fall or is it going to. Is it going to go down just along so the road? I, I mentioned that the other night, or actually the day of the flood. I mentioned that to, what's his name, Warren? Uh, what's his Warren? Uh, that Denny. Oh. So Rich? I mentioned it to him and I said, oh, it's funny, it didn't, the road didn't wash that out. And I said, I. But the snow looks like it's going to collapse it. And he goes, oh, I'm just going to go put some post up in it and hold it up. Because the way it is now, it's leaning like it's going to go down right down the side of the road. If it falls in the road, I think that the stumps need to go with it when it gets removed. The stumps that are in the way from the end yeah. of Thompson Hill Road. Because I was going to bring this up. They're outside of the 25 foot right away. I understand. But we replaced that culvert in their driveway. And who paid for the culvert? I understand that the excavator's there and they're putting stone in, but who paid for the culvert that crosses their driveway? So the, the culvert replacement policy is the town will replace it. It's part of another town project. That's the written policy. So. Okay. Because we replaced that one. And Thompson Hill was, uh, I understand the emergency and stuff going on, but we didn't have power on Thompson Hill for 28 people, and we fixed their culvert in the driveway first thing, so an ambulance could get to them, and they lived 20 feet from the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Thompson Hill was inaccessible for 24 hours almost. But it was accessible when it started. <laughs> I mean, we drove out that morning. I understand it's an emergency and things are happening, but those stumps are still setting there. You can't see when you come down Thompson Hill Road, they're rotting, but you know, we did a lot of work to get them connected back to civilization <coughs> right there at the top quickly. And the barn's falling in the road and the stumps are there. So I don't know. I'm more concerned with that coming in the road. Yeah. It's going to fall I, I'm more concerned than coming up there with the plow and shooting a bunch of, of snow onto it and knocking it down than having to come back to the town saying it's our fault. It's in the right, it's in the right of way. I agree. And it, it's in the right of way. It's in the right of way, and if it was in perfect condition and existed for 50 years, I got it. But it's not in a safe condition, and if somebody went up and inspected that. So what if we send them a letter and tell them, you know, if something happens, you'll be responsible for it and everything, you don't know that. Then you can't come back to I didn't know. He needs to tear it down. I, I well, think put it in there, you need to tear it down. And how, how, how are you going to force him to tear it down? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I don't think you can, no. But you can put it in there, we advise that you take it down and stuff, or if it goes down, it will be your responsibility to clean it up. And your then you're covered that the town don't liability. have to clean it up. But I don't think you can force it taking, you can't force them to take it down. Well, you can't, you can't force well, them if it's a good structure. You could, you could force it if you it said it's a, if you want an engineer to sign that off, a structural engineer to sign that off and say it's not a hazard. Well, we got a lot of, that's on the right track, but there's probably a way to do it. But a lot of properties. State in the state degree, right so away. You have to raise the concern. I agree with yourself. I mean, they, you have to they raise the concern really yourself. need to come down. And, and give them the, alter, you know, the alternatives, which would be put them on notice is the easy one. Uh, mention the liability and risk is another one to raise their awareness. Mm -hmm. Put it all in writing. Have it served by the sheriff, potentially. You, know, you, can, you can elevate that notice. You may not be able to do anything tomorrow. But you can certainly state the town's position yeah. that that's got to be removed or stabilized or something and can't continue. You know, right. Send it to them. From, uh, you know, we don't have an official discussion with that property owner yet. We have you know, discussion around a table, but as far as they're concerned, everything's perfectly fine. Well, the, and the other fact 
is, is let's say they did remove it, is then in that notice you would say you cannot build Meeting another term. one on its footprint. Meeting you would have term. to build it outside of the right of way, 24.75 feet from the center line. The, the next, it's only grandfathered as it stands, not in the future. We're not, you yeah. can't put a condo there, you can't build a house there. It's only for the structure that was built there before anybody enforced it. I think my two concerns is if it, if snow comes off a wing and knocks a toss off and it comes down, that's I not I can't believe it hasn't fallen in from the snow we had. I mean, I think the only thing holding it up is three pieces of vinyl siding sort of been that way for an old 30 years. Suburban. Oh, well, boy, that works. Like yeah, the kind of close in there, if I remember right, I got out and looked at it. Yeah, but he was going to put more in the other now day. Now, what, what happened? A car ran into it? Yeah. That's what I thought. That's yeah, and it seriously undermined the structure, that's for sure. I mean, it's collapsing right now. They didn't know who did it? A car? No, the car no, they didn't do it. They know who did it. No insurance. No, no way to fix it. I don't know if the guy had insurance. You'd have to talk to. So on on that. So I'm here. It sounds like what we want to get to work on is drafting up a letter and sending it to him. We can authorize Susan to sign something tonight. Yeah. Get it done quicker. Right. Right. Well. I can uh, get the report from John for long. You know, we'll need insurance to stop a company wide. I don't know if you. Well, that should be, that should be there. Well, I understand. Yeah, but I, I, I just wondered if they got the insurance money and spent it. Well, you probably did. Yeah. They they just fixed it. You're yeah. not going to read them, but you might tell you that now. That's really, that's not our concern. Right. That's our concern is just to build it. So, He's so very on, the, on the, um, <laughs> on the day we went around rolling. with, on the day we went around with FEMA, and we were up there. He came out and was talking to us and was talking about the shed. And uh, we allowed him to tell it was in the right of way and something really needed to happen. And he talked about because they'd been there and the car had hit it. But I don't, Ron, I don't remember if you were there when that. I think he said he got no insurance. I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm, uh, we talked to so many people about so many things that day. It's just kind so, of a. So, you mean they got no insurance from the person that hit it, or they yeah. have no homeowner's insurance? Because uh, at that didn't, point, didn't it's a battle between for. homeowner's insurance and the, the person's car insurance. And their homeowner's right. insurance would have to cover it. And then at some point, if we don't do anything about it, not only does it become a liability to the town, that the town, let's say it collapses, let's say you're following the plow truck, the plow trucks wing blows snow into it and falls on the car behind it. Right. If we didn't send a letter, we don't send a letter to them. We own that car behind it. If we don't send a letter, as soon as we send a letter, that right, we get out puts them on notice. No, that's a liability. Register. Okay, so we need a motion to authorize me to sign a Make cryptic motion letter. Make a motion to sign a letter we'll sent to uh, Ronnie Warren. I've got his shed that's leaning into the road. We'll send a copy to everybody before he. Okay. 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 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <coughs> Anybody abstaining? Okay. I, I just checked the parcel map and I don't have a mooring owning. It, uh, yeah, I, I just looked at it and I'm like, I don't know how they own that. Yeah. They, there's no mooring on that side of the road. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, don't, oh, I just it, looked at it. It's too, even more interesting. And it? I don't know how they own it unless I have yeah, to do the research. Back, on the tax property? It's on uh, Joyce, somebody. It's on Joyce Tomlin's. Or it's partially on who's the who's got 400 Thompson Hill there in the house on the corner. Joyce Thompson? Go Joyce Tallman. Joyce she goes all the way down there? No. Well, it does, yes, but I don't Water know there. where the line is. Exactly. I don't know where the line is. I don't know if it's the road. Is tree line I don't know there? if it's the road. We'll, we'll get the letter to the right people. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll figure out. I have multiple parties, potentially. Okay. Right. The shed owner, the landowner. Possible. <laughs> well, there might be two. It's not on right. the it might, be a, it might be a leftover easement on that piece of property. Yeah, we would yeah. find yeah. that from a yeah. parcel that. Yeah. 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 Okay, anything what? else? We are going to need to go into executive session. Got any 
Anything else? No. Me. Everything's good. Okay. Nope. Then we'll need a motion to go into executive session and take a break and make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Okay. Yeah.